Hey guys, Dr. Dobson, and in this one we're going to be doing a custom shaded single central incisor. Uh, here's a photo of the situation as the patient presented. There was likely a filling on the 2-1 just as, as there is on the 1-1 one -one that got some recurrent decay and the filling debonded, leaving an unsightly situation. It looks like it's going to be a bit of a deeper lesion, so we're going to take a PA. And on the PA we see that there is no periapical pathology. Uh, we do see a nostril that some might confuse as a lesion. Uh, we are going to pulp test the tooth. Uh, I'll take a shade tab. Usually I don't use them because I will mill multiple shades and pick the closest one. Going to pulp test here. Uh, I like to use EPT over cold, but I'll often do both because false positives and false negatives are commonplace with pulp vitality testing. And then we're going to get started. We're going to freeze the patient. We got a positive response, by the way, normal response. So likely endo was not going to be involved in this case, but we'll give a disclaimer that it could happen. Going to freeze the tooth. This is a painful area to freeze, unfortunately, for the patient, but uh, needs to be done. Give a rinse and then get going by uh, adding some flowable composite to the missing tooth area, curing it with the Velo Grand before taking our preliminary impression. Leave it for a minute, remove it, inspect it, we're happy, and we're going to get to prepping. KSO on a high speed, going to do our incisal reduction first. The uh, flowable composite's just going to flake away because it's not bonded, and then we'll start our axial reduction. I uh, This is a situation where you're going to want to bury the margin, so we'll uh, do our initial axial reduction about gingival. And then we'll pack some cord and then drop it another half millimeter at the end. I'm going to prep the tooth. I think there's plenty of ferrule there. I'm not concerned about uh, retention in a situation like this, even with a non-retentive prep. going to prep the lingual axial area, and then we're going to remove the tooth decay with a small carbide on a slow speed until we're back on hard tooth tissue. Round it off with a diamond, and then we have a space that we're going to need to replace with the core material. No secret, I like Equia Forte, so we're going to use that. Etch five seconds, rinse, dry, and then apply the Equia Forte material, overfilling, packing it in, and then waiting five minutes. Equia Forte it works great as a core material because it doesn't debond. And it's, it's on its indications for use if you read the product monograph. And then we're just going to finish prepping the tooth as ideally as we can. Doing the, finishing the lingual here. And we're getting pretty close. A little bit more reduction. We like to have at least a millimeter in every situation for monolithic zirconia. And then... A little bit more lingual reduction, and we're going to pack our cord, size one ultra pack, with an astringent in. Pack our cord, and then once we have uh, dropped the margins a little bit, we'll take our scan. I'm going to send the scan to my designer, and he's going to send me back the STL that I'll mill out in my uh, in my Roland in house, a couple shades couple few shades sometimes and then we'll uh, temporize the tooth apply our uh, temp material put it in the mouth for a minute remove it and then begin trimming the margins gonna tell the patient that the temporary is not gonna look great and they have a they actually have an underbite so we're gonna be reducing the buccal incisal aspect of the temp to get it out of occlusion load it with temp bond, and then uh, send the patient home for a week while we mill our crown. There it is. Uh, I like I custom stain my crowns. There's the before custom staining. And uh, I use a product called Mio. It's a liquid ceramic. There it is. And it just gets paint literally painted onto the tooth. And there's tons of shades, tons of colors you can use. In different situations. This tooth kind of had like a band of gray along the cervical area and then a band of gray along the uh, incisal area and then it's like whiter in the middle so we put some white 
And then it gets baked in a porcelain furnace for about 15 minutes. <laughs> Sorry, this file. Bake it in a porcelain furnace for 15 minutes, uh, and then uh, and then load it up with Panavia. There's the final result, and we're satisfied with that. So we'll load it up with prep the uh, tooth with pumice, load up the ceramic primer, the Intaglio, and then load it with uh, Panavia SA. And then that's that's pretty much that one. I want to give a shout out to uh, the video editor that who did this. His name is Dr. Milton Vega from California, and he does a great job with these things. So thank him for this video.